hi, uh, my name is Daniel Jones. Uh, I am uh, Aboriginal. I am from the Gundara tribe, which is from Western Sydney. Uh, so for my role in this project is I am the project manager, uh, Aboriginal representative, games designer, plus producer of the documentary. I do have other roles within the project, um, but they're the ones that I sort of, I fly with. When I started building this project, I wanted it to be a my country. I wanted to go to where I was born and where I had the biggest impact of my you know, indigenous um, learning. So I'm Andy, I am the lead programmer for the project at the moment, and I'm in charge of doing all the scripts, all the programming and bug fixing any issues we have with him. The thing that I enjoyed the most doing this project is watching how everything gets put together. So from my side, all the programming, making sure all the stuff for the game works and then seeing it all actually work in the game is what I think I find the most enjoyable. My name is Stephen Woods. I am the audio engineer for this project. The part that I enjoyed the most uh, is definitely the language. Learning the stories and learning the culture through writing the script for the game. Hi, my name is Julia and I'm the director for the documentary. I think this project is super special because it's something that we have never seen before. This VR experience is not only a game, it's so much more. Me and my team, before being part of this, we had to study for months and we had to learn about the Aboriginal culture in order to feel it and be part of it. In December 2022, me and my crew went to film the spirit of the Red Sand. We also got the opportunity to watch their night show. It was such an incredible experience because I learned how important are the dances in the Aboriginal culture. It's not just a dance, but it's much more, it's a ritual. When you first start into the game, you pick the tribe that you're at. For us, we're looking at a dialect instead of country, so we're doing the Yagara dialect. You pick that and you get taken into the top of a mountain, which you know we're using as the Toowoomba Ranges or Mount Kutha, things like that. And you get to pick your totem. After picking your totem, what you then get to do is go through into the tribe, your totem, your spirit animal is going to walk through with you to allow you to uh, enter the, the, the tribe or your tribe and go to interaction points. So we have uh, animal interaction points, we have musical interaction points, um, we have weapons, food and tucker, and what these points are is a little bit about what that is for the culture and the country that you stand on, but also what they're used for. You can go down and you can pick up a bull roarer. You can swing it and listen to the sound, but also have your totem stand behind you and tell you exactly what it's used for. My name is Bill Bonner. I'm a Jagara man of the Jagara Nation. Totem is very important. Totem is something that's left, to, left down by ancestor to ancestor, yep. right? We have a couple of totems, and we have the uh, red belly black snake. I walk through the bush, and when I'm walking through the bush, I put my foot down, and this red belly black snake stood up, but he didn't have a red belly, he had a red head. And he looked at me, and I looked at it, and then it dropped, and it went. That, and that was twice that happened to me when I was doing archaeologist work. There's, there's the West Eagle, he, he's, he's the one that you know goes out in the ocean and that comes back. You know? And uh, it, that's one of our totems. Um, you know, I first seen a, an Indigenous painting, it was about the rainbow serpents. It's from uh, a tribe over in Western Australia. It wasn't until I was actually sitting on the balcony up at SAE and I really sat there and I thought of what I could do for my final project. And making that painting into a VR game, I found it very easy to sort of see myself. And that's when I started writing the idea 
of how I could take dialect and turn that into a video game. And that's where Nagata Mob really uh, began. So my country is the Gundnar tribe. Uh, you know, I spoke to elders down there and I said to them, I said, look, what could we do as content creators, help with indigenous culture, community and language? Uh, they turned around and said, no, no, can't, can't make a game about that. The games, games can't be done. But what we ended up doing was we found an experience, an experience like no other. Looking around at other places, there was nothing like this ever made. Uh, there was nothing that was this in depth and thought of other than some AR sort of technology, um, museums and other cultural centers. And with the help of my team, we now made this into reality. I think that this project is unique because uh, a lot of games out there don't tend to fall into the educational aspect. With this one, it's very, uh, it's very focused on trying to teach the next generation. And I think that's really important. A part of the experience is that it's meant to be authentic as well. Uh, we do want to make sure it's uh, respecting the people and that it's um, giving back to the country in a way that anyone can appreciate. Biggest concern was to make sure that we weren't taking or disrespecting the culture, but we were also giving it as a tool to instruct the younger gen or the future generation on respects of country, land. Um, one of the biggest things for uh, NAIDOC 2023 this year uh, is respect to elders. The reason I wanted to create a game for kids was that that is the future generation. That is the future sort of torchbearers of the indigenous culture. The reason that I thought of putting also it into VR is because that's the new and latest technology. That is what we as game designers and developers are starting to look into. Smashing that with, you know, culture and, you know, language, you know, dialect, I thought those two would have matched perfectly than just a game on your mobile or your game just, you know, directly on the PC where you don't get to really fully immerse with culture or really immerse with things um, that we tried to include into the project. When you know your country and you know who you are and what you are, it's, 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 it's wonderful. It's something like this to let people out there know the truth. Truth, understanding. We, you know, we, uh, our language was taken away from us as babies. Our parents weren't allowed to teach us anything. I don't know why that they, you know, won't allow it. So why can't we, as content creators or elders or anything like that, get up and say, well, it's time to bring our language back. It's time to start teaching you know, our future generation that language. It's time now to say, well, it, we're going to teach you this. It's not going to teach you, you know, a different country's language and schools like they do. Let's learn the traditional language of the country you're at. Because we're doing a dialect, we're not doing just a singular tribe. Which, for a couple of, you know, uh, people uh, within the project, um, you know, have to learn that we're not doing this tiny little section. It's, it's a bigger, broader thing where I can't just go to one area and say, hey, I'm doing this game, you know, I'm using the Yagara dialect, can I do X, Y, and Z? I actually had to go to different TOs, different elders, and get the permission and approval. When you know your country, you know who you are and what you are is very important. Many of the, the building that we had to use or the weapons and all that, we had to make sure we were culturally appropriate. We had to make sure that we were abiding by the indigenous cultural law um, that we had, but also making sure that we can get the full fun, entertainment and experience that uh, an indigenous person or a non-indigenous person can get to learn the project. We wanted to keep it uh, true to the roots of the culture and the people that we are trying to support, we want them involved and we also want to show them off to the world, give them their voice and their image. What I loved about the voiceover work is the fact that I met some pretty interesting and wonderful people.
like for example Kelly who is on board with the project uh, helping us out she has been amazing Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm a proud Wiradjuri woman from New South Wales. My daughter has autism and she uses things like um, the games and uh, the virtual reality to go into a different space and it helps her relax. And I feel like this game, when I seen it, was definitely something that I feel that would help her um, grow both educationally um, mentally, uh, you know, uh, spiritually, um, and help her connect with her ancestors that we can't get to every day because we're living in the city. I identify with gaming um, as a skill to be able to communicate with my children. I think it's a really good tool for the kids to be able to communicate with the land and the culture if they otherwise can't get out to see it. Like if you look in the world of autism, like they use VR on a daily basis, which is why we originally purchased ours. Um, and we use it for educational purposes. So I, I write the script for the dialogue. So whatever you hear in the game, that's just written by me. And I think that process of learning and applying it to the product makes it a really good learning outcome. Like, uh, I've, I've learned a lot, I loved it. At the end of the day, um, and at the end of this project, my biggest hope is that this project doesn't end here in the Yuggera dialect. It doesn't end in the Brisbane Five Tribes. It goes off to other dialects, and we build this for an Australian national project and each dialect can have their own level, each dialect can have their own cultural aspects, and each, each community can come together under one umbrella sort of uniform and say, you know, this is now the tool to teach Indigenous languages in schools. Thank you so much, guys, for following the Nakata Mob in this incredible experience. We really hope you enjoy the documentary and also the VR experience and we can't wait to go further with this project in the future. So thank you so much for your support.